Around a month ago, I posted a video on binary DFC reactors, which are DFC reactors using two cores instead of a single one, and they produce ridiculous amounts of power. In this video, we are going to take a look on looping single core DFC reactors, which basically produce the same amount of power but only using a single core. Now, the reason they are called looping single core reactors is because a beam, an emitter beam, is looped back into the cores two times using multiple emitters. So that is why they are called looping single core DFC reactors. Now a big shout out to Mega Miena for actually showing me this build and also helping me come up with the name for it. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into it and see how to build and operate this reactor. Alright, so these are the materials that you will need in order to get started. 4 DFC emitters, 1 fuel injector, 1 receiver and 1 DFC stabilizer. Next up, you will also need a vibrant singularity, 2 catalyst, 1 dark fusion core and also temporary blocks of your choice. So from the ground, come up by 6 blocks and on the 7th block, place down your dark fusion core. Now from this fusion core, come out by 5 blocks and then place 2 more temporary blocks, break, break the first one and place down a DFC emitter facing into the core. So thus the DFC emitter is 5 blocks away from the core. Now opposite to the first emitter that we placed, build out another 5 blocks and perpendicular to it, place down a second emitter. So the first emitter is going along this axis and the second emitter is going perpendicular to it. Now from the second emitter here, we are going to place down a third emitter which is perpendicular to it. So come out by 5 blocks again and on the sixth block, place down an emitter which is perpendicular to the second one. Because we want to loop it back into the core. And now that we have placed the third emitter, it's finally time to place down the final one. So come out by 5 blocks again and place down the fourth emitter facing into the core. And with this, we have made the loop that we wanted. So here's the first emitter going into the second one. The second emitter then goes into the third one. Third emitter into the fourth one and the fourth emitter goes again into the core. So from the fourth emitter, we are going to take out a power output. So come, by, come out by 5 blocks again, then 2 temporary blocks break the first one and place down your DFC receiver uh, facing the core. So there, we have set up our emitters and our receivers. Now break down the temporary blocks that we placed in the beginning and place down a DFC fuel injector and on the top of the core place down your DFC stabilizer. There we go. So. Now that we have placed all of our components, it's now time to set up the core. So in the core, place down your vibrant singularity and any two of the catalysts that you want. Alright, it's now time for laying down some cables and pipes. So the things that are going to require power are the emitter and the stabilizer. So we are going to connect all the emitters and stabilizers with cables. Now I am going to use the quoted copper cable here and also make sure to connect the stabilizer there we go and once the cables are laid down it's now time to connect the emitters and the receiver with pipes as we need to pump cryogel in all of these things in order to cool them down so the receiver and the emitters all of them should be connected by fluid ducts there we go all right also bring these fluid ducts down and we should be good to go so before we get any further just place down one piece of copper wire on the receiver as well now as i'm building this in creative i am only using infinite fluid barrels but make sure that you have enough cryogel and fuel to run this system as it is very power hungry so place down one barrel beneath all of these fluid ducts and set all of them to cryogel by shift right clicking now also set this barrel to cryogel and place down an infinite fluid barrel in there. So there goes our cryogel and all of our emitters and the receiver will soon fill up with cryogel. Now let's set up our fuel. For this reactor we are going with the cheapest fuel that we can get our hands on which is the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So first set up the fuel injector with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and then place 4 barrels around the fuel injector set two of them to liquid hydrogen and place infinite fluid barrels in them and then set two of them to liquid oxygen so two barrels are for hydrogen and two barrels are for oxygen as if you try running this on a single barrel it will simply run out as this reactor is very fuel hungry and very gradual 
So with this, our core and our fuel injector should have enough fuel and will run without any problem. Now let's set up a power input. For this, I am going to use an infinite battery in an energy storage block. But if you are playing this in survival, then here is where your power input from the RBMK reactor will be coming from. So that's the power input. Now let's take care of the power output. Place one block in front of the cable that you placed on the top of the receiver. And on top of that, place down the FENSU, directly connecting it to the cable block. So we have set the power input and the power output. Now inside the DFC stabilizer, place down your stabilizer lens and set this value to 100. And once you have set the DFC stabilizer to 100, now let's set all of the receivers, oh sorry, the emitters. So this is the first emitter, then the second, third and the fourth one. So the first emitter will be set to a value of 18. And we are setting this value to 18 because we are using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Now, assume that we were using any other fuel, then this value would be less than 8. So the first emitter is set to 18, all the other emitters, the second, third and fourth one are set to 1 only. You do not need them to be more than 1. Now once all of this is done, let's start inputting some power in this reactor, with that the stabilizer should turn on. And once the stabilizer is up and running, let's now fire up our DFC reactor. So here goes the first DFC emitter and it is shooting its beam into the second one so let's redirect it into the third one by powering it and the third emitter when powered will shoot its beam into the fourth one and the fourth one when powered will finally shoot its beam back to the core into the receiver so we are producing over 50 tera hg per second so as i told you guys this reactor produces pretty much a lot of power equivalent to a binary dfc reactor now as you can see our heat saturation is at 96%. This is because we are running it at a power level of 80. Now let's say I run it at a power level of 70. Our heat saturation will come down to 90%. If I make it down even more like let's say 15. Then the saturation will come down to 80%. So what you have to make sure is that this heat saturation should never reach 100%. Otherwise your reactor will explode. That is why our upper limit for this fuel is going to be 18 as the heat saturation goes above 100 when we are running it at 19%. Now once you have started producing power, you can set the FENSU to input output mode which is the green mode here and then connect it to all the cables that we laid before. Once you do that, the FENSU will power all the emitters and the stabilizer and you no longer need additional power. So your reactor will become semi self-sufficient, kind of at least in terms of energy. So the FENSU is now powering the DFC stabilizers and all four of the DFC emitters. So yeah, it's pretty good. So that was all I had for this video guys. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out.